Okay, now I am continuing my reading, and in this chapter, and well, the, in this series, uh, what I'm doing is reading through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a little bit as I move along. Right now, I am still in Deuteronomy. This is chapter 4. However, this is a very lengthy chapter, and it has a whole lot of stuff in it. So we will probably do this in two separate videos. Here we go. Moses exhorts Israel to keep the commandments, to teach them to their children, and to be exemplary before all nations. They are forbidden to make graven images or worship other gods. To witness that they had heard the voice of God, Israel shall be scattered among all nations when they worship other gods. They shall be gathered again in latter days when they seek the Lord their God. Moses extols mercy and goodness of God to Israel. Let us read. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord thy God which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed, hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do, <coughs> that ye should do, in the, do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Okay, let, let's pause there a minute. I probably read a little more than I should have. Just going back, a couple of things. The uh, he talks about Baal Peor. This is the event dealing with Balaam and the uh, Moabites and the Midianites who tempted Israel into worshiping Baal Peor, which caused a great plague to spread through the camp. I think it was over fourteen thousand people died. So that's what he's referring back to here. Another thing he says, "You shall not add unto the word which I command you; neither shall you diminish out from it." This is not talking about adding new scripture, of course, because we have the rest of the Bible and the Book of Mormon. You have the rest of the scriptures are still about, still coming up. So this can't mean scripture. What this is talking about is don't alter the law. I have given you the commandments. You know, the commandment says to uh, honor the Sabbath. Don't change that. Keep that law. You know, we have the story of the man who was stoned because he gathered sticks on the Sabbath. He broke the law. We had to enforce the, the penalty prescribed by the law. Do not change these things. Keep them the way they are. And I love that it says here, What nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? Now, we understand this to be a lesser law. The law of Moses had things added to it and had more prescriptions to it, had, had more things to it than the higher law does that Christ himself would later uh, restore. But even this lesser law of Moses is more righteous, is more good than any other law currently in existence. There is nothing in the law of Moses that can be termed evil or even slightly wicked. It is all a righteous law because God does not give unrighteous laws. He doesn't permit unrighteousness. He permits less righteousness at times. But he never permits unrighteousness. And that, that's a distinction that we, we need to understand. God does not allow sin. 
but it's like the old uh, conference talk now. I can't remember who it was, but it's, you know, good, better, and best. The law of Moses was good. It wasn't the best, but it was good. Everything in it was good. So I love that description. And we, get, we, we need to understand that nothing that God commands can be evil. Everything that God commands is good and righteous. It may not always be the best, because we can't always handle the best. The law of Moses was given for those of a uh, weaker spiritual constitution, you could say. They couldn't handle the more complex foods of the Spirit. But it was still good. Verse 9. Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And ye, come, and ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Now, this is referring back to um, I think it was just after the Exodus when they were in the wilderness and they heard the voice of the Lord and they all got scared and said, okay, you go talk to God. We'll just, we'll just deal with you. We don't want to deal. It, it scared them. As he said, fire, darkness, thick darkness. This was vaporous clouds. It wasn't just an absence of light. It was thick vapors. And they got scared. But they still heard the voice. All the camp of Israel had heard the voice of God. And that's what this is talking about. None of these people. Were, nobody was left out. They all knew. So and remember, even though these are the ones that survived the 40 years in the wilderness. Remember, those who died in the wilderness were only those who were 20 years old and older. He's not here talking about all the people that were just born yesterday or you know, born in the last two or three years. He's talking to those who were teenagers, who were maybe eight or nine years old at the time that they heard the voice of the Lord. They still would remember it. Verse 14. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth, Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven shouldest be driven to worship, uh, shouldest be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath delivered unto all nations under the whole heaven. For the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. So. They didn't see God. Now Moses has seen God. And we know God is a resurrected man. That's what, God has a form. But he did not show himself to Israel because he did not want to encourage them in making idols. He didn't want to encourage the artists to make statues. So no, don't think of God as being part of this world. He's not. 
He is so far above this world, nothing in this world can compare to him. So don't try to make anything. That's the reason for it. It's not saying that God has no form. It's not saying that God has no body. It's saying that Israel at that time, if they had seen God, would have connected him to the physical mortal world and would have started just like other people, just like the Egyptians, just like the Canaanites, all these people. They worshipped. Uh, they turned their... Let me see if I can explain this properly. It's not that they worshipped frogs or the sun exactly. Well, they did worship the sun, but by making images... The, the idea is that the original idea of images, even in like the Hindu religion, but people tell you they don't worship the image itself. The image is just there to focus their worship. They know that the God that they're praying to isn't really the image. It's another being, but the image allows them to focus, allows them to think about God better. That's what they say. And that's what it probably started as for most people. But when you start, when your worship has to have a physical focus, then you start thinking that the God you're worshiping is part of the physical world, is part of the mortal world. And you start doing what the Greeks did and what the Egyptians did and assigning mortal characteristics to God instead of viewing him as the perfect eternal being that he is. You start seeing flaws because if he's just another being of this world and this world is so flawed then God obviously is also flawed. This is the kind of reasoning that God is trying to avoid. He's not saying, it's not evil to paint a painting depicting God. It's not wicked to have a statue depicting God. But if you put that as the focus of your worship, your worship will inevitably, and it may not be you, it may not even be your children, but through the generations, your worship will turn into a worship of something less than God. That is the progression that it takes. And God is here saying, we are not doing that. You are going to avoid that completely because you cannot make a likeness of me. I'm not showing you what I look like. Don't even try it because it is going to cause problems. Anyways, that's how I see this. That That is but my understanding. I, I could be wrong. I'll, I'll admit it. But I think this seems to be going from a historical and psychological point, uh, point of view. That seems to be what he's saying here is this progression. If you start worshiping idols, even if they're an idol of me, you will inevitably create false understandings as the generations pass and people will follow it. Anyways, I'm going to read three more verses for this video, and then we will call it good. Here we go. Verse 21. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, and swear that I should not go over Jordan, and that I should not go in unto the, that good land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan. But ye shall go over and possess that good land. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Now, just another brief note. I like this to say, remember everything. Remember the covenant. Remember everything you promised. And teach your children. Keep it going through the generations. Keep the traditions. But again, Moses does not enter the promised land. But I want to say just one word on that word jealous. Because there is a difference between jealousy and envy. And it is significant that God is always described as being jealous. However, I just saw how long this video is. So I'm actually going to stop it here. And I will talk about jealousy in a supplemental video. So I will see you then. Have fun.